what do you think about coming down to Jacksonville or and uh, bringing that big elite size and athletic ability you have and making some plays on the perimeter for us? I would love to, Coach. Thank you so much, Coach. Year, but one thing that stays the same, the information from... Ah, nothing better than seeing a dream become reality. Happened for a dozen new Jaguar football players this weekend. The 2020 NFL Draft is in the books. Now what, Jacksonville? Can't wait till that happens for the Major League Baseball Draft and for Brooks and Ty. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Action Sports Jacks Prime Time. Twelve times Dave Caldwell made phone calls this weekend. Who expected that? The Jaguars used every one of their picks. And now we have a football team ready for training camp. I'm Brett Martineau. He's Dan Hicken. AKA Danny Downer. Well, first issue, no mini camps, right? No rookie camps. And that could be a problem for this franchise because, well, on offense, they have a second year quarterback and a new offensive coordinator. On defense, they're moving to a 3 4, which means lots of changes with no time to practice. But we'll get to that later. For now, <laughs> Let's focus in on the new 12 that the Jaguars picked this weekend. Yeah, the grades are out all over the place. Some people think grading is silly. Uh, why not, right? While meaningless because it's going to take a couple years, we do it anyway. <laughs> yes, we do. The national guys do, at least. Mel Kuyper gives the Jacksonville Jaguars a B, Dan. Yeah, NFL.com loved the Jags draft. Day wow. one, they said A. Hey. Day two, they said A. Hey. Overall, they said A. Hey. Think Henderson, Chase on big time. Chanel can really play. Even think there could be some day three starters in the bunch. How about that? Sporting news. Sporting news still exists. Yes, I do. A minus. Ouch. <laughs> I think it's fair to point out they had 13 teams with at least an A minus. So yeah. they were soft graders. Yeah. I love the Auburn safety, by the way. Uh, they did. Thinks he can develop into a starter at some point. Jack see him right now as a special teams guy mm -hmm. and some depth. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think? Did you like it? We asked on Twitter and they responded, Brent. Yeah. It looks like B was the answer of the day, right? Uh, I, I think there, A would be a lot more offense. A would be fist pump kind of picks. There yeah. were none of those. I yeah. mean, listen, there was a fun pick in Ben Barch because he's, he likes smoothies and he put on a ton of weight. I mean, the, the Chanel pick is one that's everybody's having fun with. You know, at the end of the day, everybody talked how much defense. It was seven defense, five offense. Right. But, uh, but the just, offense guys were later. It just wasn't one of those fist yeah. pump kind of. Right. Yeah, I'm not as optimistic as the national guys. I, I don't, and, you know, listen, I'm not going to pan the draft, but just didn't have that creativity, man. I, you got 12 picks. You got a chance to control. You got a chance to wheel and deal. No draft day trade shocked me. Yeah. And I would have took everything. I mean, I had three fourth round picks and, and they didn't move up. And I'm loaded with the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round. Uh, Matt Breida went for a fifth rounder. Trent Williams went for a third to fifth. Can we yeah. not have traded for those two guys? We I almost wonder help. with Trent Williams. They just didn't want him around. I mean, he I said no it. to Minnesota. But, I, I, but I understand what you were saying. Yeah. I was really surprised. Maybe not that the Jags didn't jump back into the first round. Mm -hmm. But they didn't go get another second or third round pick like you were saying. Because those guys are really valuable. I mean, Chenault in the second round, he's going to be a contributor, a big yeah. time contributor. Go get one more of those. Yeah. Whether it was Cam Akers or pick your running back. I mean, whoever just it was. take three of the fourth rounders and try to get as high up as you can at yeah. least top of the third or late second and try to get another impact player I listen again big picture down the road we, we shall see but yeah. to me like uh, 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 the, the Hamilton kid last year they had to have that linebacker so they went and got a linebacker he didn't do so great they needed a big guy so they went and got a big guy but it seemed to me like they could have got him in the fifth round or later in the fourth round if they wanted. They might have been able to. I am stunned they didn't wheel and deal more, though, yeah. just like you. And yeah. that would have been more fun. Yeah. So that's what's it kind of missed yeah. a fun factor. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Here's how the men calling the shots uh, had to react to it. Jaguars general manager Dave Caldwell and head coach Doug Marone. We didn't acquire picks to get less players. We, we acquired picks to get more players. And, and like I said, we just uh, there were so many players that we liked. That at the end of it, we were like, I wish I had a couple more picks in the seventh round. It's a young team. Uh, a lot of young guys are, are, are going to be um, coming into our locker room. And we have a pretty good foundation of young guys right now that are looking to take over and take these guys under their wing. These guys, you know, will be um, a great part of it. And they're going to have to coach him up. Jaguars will have to overachieve in 2020. For many of the guys hearing their name called this weekend was the payoff after years of hard work. Stuart Weber joins us now with more on their breakthrough moments. The Duval does, and here they are, the 12 draft picks of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And from the first round, C.J. Henderson, all the way to the seventh round. All these guys come with a story. All these guys are fulfilling a lifelong dream of getting that chance to play in the NFL. 
There was a lot of emotions over the course of this NFL draft. Damn, I mean, just, and just like a dream come true. I got drafted, just, it feel, it feel amazing. I'll work great, y'all. What do you think about coming and playing some tight end for us? I love that. That was yeah. a dream come true. Thank you so much. Let's go. This is wonderful. Shaq is going to the Jack. As soon as he said this is from the Jag, I was I almost started crying already. But yes, I, it was it was a different feeling. It's hard to explain it. Hey, we're excited about you coming in. You're gonna have uh, uh, we're looking for great things out of you. Lavisca Chenault, wide receiver, Colorado. Another door opened. Um, just another level unlocked. Um, there's plenty more levels to it. So. And I'm not stopping right now. I'm just going to keep on leveling up. Well, I loved watching you play. Your physical physical presence there, and uh, you were fun to watch. And I was kind of just betting on myself. And so going to the fourth round is good with me. Uh, now it's just it's time to work. Daniel, this is Coach Marone with Jacksonville, head coach. Congratulations, man. War Eagle. Honestly, all I can say is I'm just excited for it. I mean, be able to learn, be able to play in the NFL, and just be be able to contribute to my team. I mean, this means the world to me. Uh, it's, it's where I've always wanted to be since I was a little kid. You know, this is the day I've dreamed of. We haven't had a size receiver like you in a long time, so. No, I'm, I'm ready to get to work, Coach. It was surreal. It was really cool. Um, again, like, I was a little emotional um, and very excited. He's a guy who can get home anytime he wants on blitzes, so that's a really good pickup for the Jaguars. Do there is a drawback to drafting 12 players. All 12 of these guys might not make the final roster come season opener. They're going to have to fight for roster spots in training camp, with some possibly ending up on the practice squad. I'm Stuart Weber for Action Sports Jacks. Yeah, plenty of competition and undrafted free agents as well. By the way, more of the war room calls on Jaguars.com. Time to talk Jags' big winners from the weekend. How about Gardner Minshew, Dan? Yeah. We thought the Jaguars were going with Minshew this fall. And coming out of the draft, that's definitely the plan. They did draft a six-round quarterback, but that was a depth play. And it's a young QB room right now. Yeah, and Trey Herndon, the Jags have a lot of belief in that young corner. Analytics show he had a nice season last year. Another good thing for Herndon, he won't have to defend a top receiver. So a little less pressure. My other big winner, I think, is C.J. Henderson. Uh, ready or not, gets handed a starting job in the NFL. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We'll also get handed a $20 million contract. <laughs> I looked bad. last year. That's the number cooler. Nine, yeah. <laughs> the number nine overall pick was Ed Oliver, $19.675 million, $12 million plus guaranteed. They're sort of slotted now, so yeah. works out quick. The only negative for Henderson, as mentioned, he will often match up with the other team's best receiver in 2020. Expectations will be high on the top. And there could be some growing pains. Yeah. How about the offensive line, Dan? That's my big winner. Yeah. They are all back yeah. and are all penciled in as starters. Yeah. Another year for this group. I mean, they're not even going to get threatened here <laughs> in the offseason. <laughs> Robinson, Norwell, Linder, Cannon, Taylor, no competition for them at all. Cam Robinson might be the biggest winner of all because a lot of people wondered if he would hold down that left tackle spot. Another year of getting paid, by the way, for all those guys, too. <laughs> a chance to play more like they did a couple of seasons ago. The good news is they have played a lot of football as a unit now mm -hmm. after last year. They stayed healthy. Yep. So if they could stay healthy, maybe the chemistry is really good in 2020. Yeah, I have to say, Salvo's fired back at number 91 this weekend. If we talk about guys who didn't do so well or losers from the weekend, we can start with Dave Caldwell's comment after the first night when he had his most pointed words about the Ngakwe situation. Listen to the Jags general manager right here. We weren't able to get a trade. Uh, actually, weren't even really able to get an offer. Um, so I think his options are very limited at this point in time. And, and uh, we'll welcome him back with open arms when he's ready to come back. But we put our best foot forward, uh, not once, but twice. I hope he sees the light that, you know, Jacksonville is a good spot. And um, it, it could, at the end of the day, be his only option. Mm, sure interesting. Looks like it. Yeah, with Jason uh, picked, and Gakwe's leverage goes down, in my opinion. Jags have the cap room to pay him the $17.8 million, yet he's made it perfectly clear he never wants to play here again. So now what? Looks, Jags don't look like they're interested in trading him. Could be time for a clear-the-air meeting, but from the Ngakwe side, it looks like that's 
down the road. <laughs> it does feel like that. Give him some advice, Dan. Uncle Dan's advice is play for the <laughs> $17.8 million, get 10 sacks in the league to let you walk, or you get another tag of $18, $19 million, $35 million over two years. That ain't bad. No, nah, it isn't. That'd be my <laughs> advice, too. And I think if he does that and admits that he didn't win this part of it, yeah. he might get traded at the trade deadline if he just stays quiet and yeah. takes the paycheck. Hey, I think the big loser of this draft could be new offensive coordinator Jay Gruden. Oh, does no. he have enough to work <laughs> with on the offensive side? But I'm really going with the biggest loser of the draft is Leonard Fournette. It's obvious the Jags tried to deal him the last month and they couldn't get enough in return, Dan. Mm -hmm. Fournette probably wouldn't mind getting out of Jacksonville like so many of his teammates have already. But he's stuck for the season, it looks like. The Jags won't pick up a fifth-year option. We know that's not happening. And this is a contract year for Fournette. Even after this season, you have to wonder what kind of deal will he get on the open market given teams were unwilling to trade for him last season. It might be a show-me type of deal for Leonard Fournette even when he hits free agency. For all of our weekend coverage of the NFL Draft, check out our Action Sports Shacks Facebook page. We all have our winners and losers, yes, we including do. Uh, Stuart Weber and Marcel Robinson. I'm everywhere, Dan. You are. There I am. <laughs> there you are, too. <laughs> there you are again. <laughs> Say hey to the fans. The Jags virtual circle who were part of the draft behind the commissioner. Many of these fans had plans to go to Vegas for the draft. So did we. Instead, they watched at home like millions. The draft did the highest ratings ever. Jacksonville, seventh highest rated market in terms of TV viewing. We're number seven. By the way, Ohio had three of the top four markets. There's that. nothing to do in Ohio, apparently. <laughs> be a great little story, huh? Getting drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars in the fourth round. Because that sounds like a dream come true. All right. We're going to make we're going to make that dream come true for you. He's coming home. Shaquille Quarterman from Oak Leaf High School picked by the Jacksonville Jaguars yesterday. A no-nonsense leader will be fun to see how he transitions from college to the league. Yeah, that's pretty cool stuff right yeah. there. Welcome back to Action Sports Shaq's Primetime. One thing to know about Shaq Quarterman, he plays football the old-fashioned <laughs> way. He'll knock your head off if given the opportunity, which is good. And oftentimes <laughs> he finds that opportunity himself. Intensity, urgency, all part of his game and a kid who's always around the football. <laughs> Dan, he recorded more than 400 tackles at Oak Leaf <laughs> High School in Clay County for the Knights before heading down to South Florida to play for the Canes, and he tackled everybody down there, too. <laughs> We had a chance to catch up with Shaq this afternoon and get his thoughts about one heck of a moment. Been a lot of um, emotions, you know, from the phone call to everybody separating and just crying and everybody coming back to hug and cry again until the celebration, you know, when everybody, you know, it's like a lot of weight off of everybody's shoulders. So we finally got to enjoy the fruits of our labor, you know, just for a little while at least. And then waking up this morning, just realizing that this is my first day as a, you know, a whole day as a Jacksonville Jaguar is everything. Oh Who was the most emotional now? Give us a little, set the scene for us. Uh, who did you have around you and what was it like? And I mean, how many tissue boxes did you go through? <laughs> we went through all the tissue boxes, so we had to end up using hand towels. But um, definitely my uncle, uh, he raised me to be a man. He raised me to be a, you know, uh, a bright young man. And he really, you could tell, it was a lot of stress taken off of him. The folks at Oak Leaf have to be so proud. I think you're the first one uh, to get to the NFL. Like, what's that like? A relatively new school, new program. Uh, you got to wear that uniform and jersey and kind of carry the flag, you know, for Oak Leaf High School and the Knights. And they've really developed a nice program over there. Uh, what has the reaction been? What's it mean to you to, to kind of be the first from Oak Leaf to make it to the NFL? Um, well, ultimately, that was always the goal, you know, and – when me and my friends started at Oak Leaf, I think the year prior, they were one and nine. So they weren't the, the best school already, but I did not want to separate my, from my friends. You know, we weren't about the whole transferring. We weren't really into that. You know, we were neighborhood kids and we wanted to make our neighborhood high school great. You know, we, we got a chance to make it to the playoffs. Uh, 12 and one my junior year, I missed the playoffs my senior year, eight and two. But just being able to rep the brand and represent my school in Miami and to come back it means everything. I just wanted to put my, my, my high school on the map. Well, you certainly did that, uh, but you put yourself on the map uh, because you're a lunch pail guy. You get it done. Doug Marone last night defended their draft. You get a lot of high character guys, but what does that mean to you? It's very important to me because of the way that I was raised. You know, my parents did a lot for me uh, to make it to this day. You know, we struggled and we went through all our trials and tribulations, so there was no way I could 
you know, do anything less than represent them the way that I should. So, who did you like the most from a linebacker perspective in the NFL or, or anywhere else? Definitely John Beeson. He's my mentor. Um, when I got to the University of Miami, I actually wanted number two. Well, my, my uncle wanted me to have number two. I didn't want number two unless John Beeson said I should have it. And when he did, I almost passed out. True story, almost. He's my guy. Being able to watch film with him, he's taking me under his wing full throttle. And I just really appreciate it because he didn't have to do that. What do you see yourself as when you wrap this thing up a decade from now? A decade from now, I see myself um, accomplishing everything I wanted to accomplish. You know, my goal is to just be the best I, uh, be the best me, be the best player I could be. You know, and if I do that, I'm pretty sure, very sure I'll follow my very great company. One of the great qualities you have is instincts, as everybody will say. Um, what, what does that come from? Uh, I think, first off, is my preparation. You know, you have to prepare. You have to prepare. The margin for error in college was already very minimal. And then at this level, the margin for error is different. You know, you have, you're playing with a whole different group of, uh, group of guys. Guys that will make you pay if you make one mistake. So you have to do your due diligence to prepare to put yourself and your team in the best position to win. So like you said, it is going to be tough. You know, you have to roll with the punches. But as the team works with me, you know, you just have to do what you're supposed to do. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, have you practiced your do ball? I mean, you got to do, I mean, you, you got to have a do ball now, right? Can you give us a do ball or what? Do ball. <laughs> uh, I'll be saying that loud and proud for a long time to come, hopefully right here in Jacksonville. Hey, how about the NFL draft in the AFC South, Dan? A reminder of what happened last year. Oh, thanks. The Jags finishing in the basement of the division. Yeah, the Texans won the division, but it was the Titans that went to the AFC title game. Indy disappointing after the retirement of Andrew Luck. Now they have Phillip Rivers. So let's begin with the Texans. And if you remember... Uh, the best <laughs> moment of the draft was Bill O'Brien losing his mind. And if you're a lip reader, he was using some bad words. <laughs> he was. Now, listen, he's traded away DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. He's making a mess out of the franchise. Yeah. It looks like. I like the guy, the couple guys that they got, though. Well, Ross Blacklock, they beef up their defense yeah. a little bit, right? They yeah. got rid of the DJ Reader is no longer Gone. there. So, Blacklock uh, fills that boy. Jonathan Grenard, of course, from Florida could well, be a good get. Here's the one thing I was thinking about Grenard, too. You better watch him versus Chasen and see who's, you know, because Grenard's yeah. a later pick. Chasen's got to be a star. So. And Charlie Heck, uh, who uh, grew up around here yeah. with his dad, Andy Heck, when was the offensive line. So, like what the Colts did on offense to help Phillip Rivers. Yeah, let's go Indianapolis right now because they're a team that could take a leap depending mm -hmm. on how Phillip Rivers plays, but they did support him. Pittman's a guy that everybody kind of loved. Mm -hmm. They got him early in the second round. And how about behind that offensive line? Jonathan Taylor could run wild. And listen, I think the Jags, well, I heard the Jags had a lot of interest in Jonathan Taylor. Well, they and the traded Colts up against right him. in front of them. I heard. I say. wonder if the Jags were going to take him at 40. I don't know. I just wonder if they were interested in taking Taylor at 42. They also drafted a backup quarterback, Jacob Eason. By the way, I heard it was between Chenault and Taylor, so yeah. it would have been interesting to see yeah. who they would have drafted. But obviously, the Colts sniffed that out yeah. and went and got him. All right, and finally, the Titans. Now, listen, the Titans brought back Derrick Henry. They signed Tannehill. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, and they haven't made a ton of moves. Vic Beasley in free agency. I went to the AFC Championship game last year. They beef up their line a little bit. Christian Fulton could be a big bargain pick late in the second round. <laughs> Everybody in the division needed cornerback help. Yeah. Best thing about the Titans was Vrabel's kids. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, here's the thing, though. Mm -hmm. You measure yourself against a division. The Jags, there's no need to measure yourself against the Chiefs and mm -hmm. the Saints and teams like that. Measure yourself against – I'm not sure anybody ran and hit – Right. In the draft, in right. this offseason, on the Jaguars. Could They're still the worst team in the division, though, no question. until they prove otherwise. <laughs> I think these were the best moments of the draft weekend, seeing kids with their families like Van Jefferson so pumped up about going to the Rams in the second round, the former Gator. Van's dad, Sean, played his football at Reigns and now is the wide receivers coach of the Jets. Man, you know they were excited. You know what? Then it like fulfilled the March Madness yeah. kind of part yeah. that we missed. Yeah. I loved it. Action Sports Jacks Primetime, Saturday at 1030 on Fox 30.